These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Thomas Paine's pamphlet, The American Crisis, was published in Philadelphia on December 19, 1776, one week before General George Washington's bold plan to cross the Delaware River and attack Hessian and British troops encamped in Trenton. The general read Paine's stirring words to his men the very next day. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered, yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. We hope to improve their morale, try to boost their courage, boost their morale, and we are going to make this happen. December 21st, 1776. Morale is low amongst the troops camped in and around McConkie's Ferry, Pennsylvania. The exhausted Continental Army, defeated in New York, had suffered being scattered and chased for six months by British forces across New Jersey. Along the way, 1,700 soldiers had been wounded and could no longer fight, and many more deserted. With enlistments set to expire in 10 days, General Washington knew he needed a victory, or all was lost. Things looked bleak, but the very next day, fate smiled on America's first army. Last-minute reinforcements from General Lee and General Gates' lost divisions finally arrived in camp. Washington suddenly had 2,400 able-bodied troops for this daring Christmas Day attack. I'm concerned with the weather, but I think with uh, strong warsmen and uh, my second-in-command, Colonel Knox, taking over and running, the, uh, running this crossing, I think we are definitely going to cross. The Americans, led by able patriot Daniel Bray, had collected all the boats and ferries for 50 miles up and down the Delaware River and hidden them behind islands on the Pennsylvania side. Getting the troops and supplies safely across was now General Washington's chief concern. It's going to be 18 cannons, all of our horses for the officers and all the troops. The horses and cannons will go across on the flat bottom ferries and Durham boats will do the bulk of our transport of troops. The river is very swift and we, if we're not together then it makes it very difficult to move the boat. A crossing of this magnitude had never before been contemplated. The Army's oarsmen, mostly naval seamen, had the difficult task of working heavy 60-foot-long Durham boats designed to travel up and down the river, back and forth across the Delaware's fast-moving current. Washington's confidence inspired his anxious men. They're not made to go across this river, they're made to go up and down the river, so the difficulty with getting across is the, the shape and what the boat's made for, but we will get across. December 25th, 1776. A frigid Christmas day. By mid-afternoon, the Continental Army was all assembled along the river to begin the fateful crossing. The weather was harsh, and there were ice flows. The password of the day was victory or death. If I get shot and killed, I would hope that we are remembered by all the people that make this country great and say these people sacrificed so that we could have the freedom that we want and that we can grow as a nation. Twelve exhausting hours later, the troops were finally all across. It was early morning, December 26, 1776. Forming two divisions, the men quick marched the few miles down to Trenton in the cold and dark taking the Hessian and British troops completely by surprise. They captured a thousand prisoners, killing 22 Hessian mercenaries and wounding 98 more, and seized much needed muskets, powder, and artillery. Only three Americans were killed, six wounded. General Washington's plan was a brilliant success. It was the turning point of the American War for Independence.